Mark Johnston Allen, who was uh, a very good player, but was never a top 16 player. But he played Stephen Hendry in his absolute pomp three times and beat him three times. Yeah, you get this, those, those think situations crop up. Um, but yeah, we, everybody's got players that they struggle against. And sometimes it's as much chance as anything. They're just other good players that's had a good day on them days. I think the key, though, for us and Backer, and we've said this already today, is he, he doesn't seem to fear players. You know, I mean, he's playing the greatest player ever, but he seems to play his normal game against him. And if they go in, then, of course, he's dangerous. Yeah, he's a bullish type player himself. He likes to sort of go for the shots and he'll push the boat out. If he gets the chance, he'll back himself to knock the 50-50 the, the, the ones in. And if they go in, he gets a chance and he, he obviously fancies it and he can put it away. So, yeah, it um, should be interesting to see how this pans out. Well, that was a chance, but O'Sullivan got nowhere near the pot. Yeah, I don't know whether he can pot this and try and get behind the black. Three in the same pocket. I find that strange when players point at the white as if you don't know where it is. Just in case he was struggling to find it. Well, just helping him out. It's been a long day for the referee. Foul for Ronnie O'Sullivan. I thought he was going to sort of play behind the back of the black there, sort of drop it in, but he just fancied screwing across and it all went wrong. Well, the previous red he attempted from distance, he didn't get close to, but uh, let's see with this one. Well, he got closer, but he didn't pot it. On this blue here, if he pots this red to really go straight into him if he wants. One. Really sort of set his stall out. No, he's not. Six. I think in these situations, it's very easy to run out of reds and not get an angle to go into the pack. Seven. He's got a chance here to do it as well. No. Fourteen. Alexander Barker, 14. One. Now, I think he's going to go into these. There are players here who will screw off the pink. He thinks he's got the right angle. Rodney O'Sullivan, one. Yeah, a bit of an uncertain start here. These pair look useless. Well, I think the thing is, I'm not saying he's sort of feeling the pressure, but it's been a long day. If you get to this point, you want to win the group, obviously. You don't want to spend all this time here. Not quite for nothing, but with nothing to, to sort of show for it in terms of coming back. So all day long, this has looked like the crunch match, and that's how it's panned out. It's the one that's going to decide the group winner. Yeah, it's um, it can be funny on your work on 
against you on your mindset if you've been here all day and it just shows you how, gay, how old this game is. You know, if you're just not quite focused, you can miss anything. And the, the, you know, the best of the best can. And you take it for granted the way he plays at times, or the professionals do. But no, it's really hard. Yeah, and let's be clear, he doesn't need to be here, but he's here because he wants to be, and therefore he wants to win. Of course, yeah, I know he sometimes goes about like he's not bothered, but you don't get, you don't, you're not what? the greatest ever if you're not an animal and want to win all the time. So. Although his demeanour doesn't look like it at times, he wants to win. Well, Nelson Backer might look back maybe with regret in the early exchanges in this frame because O'Sullivan's in now and he could well stay in this time. Yeah, I've always felt with Ronnie and all most of the top, top players. Sometimes they might miss against you. But if you don't take your opportunity to start missing yourself, it's as if they sort of say, oh, well, so you've had your chance now, and they, they will at some point start potting balls. That red just flicked the green, otherwise the other one would have been on, but he's coped and taken a different one. Nine. Yeah, we're two months on from that extraordinary uh, moment when he won the seventh world title, equaled Stephen Hendry's record and uh, clinging on to Judd Trump, wasn't he? So emotional, his family there. It was a big, historic moment in our sport. Yeah, I mean, just confirm what we all knew, to be honest. We've all, I think most of the players have said he's the greatest for quite a few years now. Um, he's just ticking off all the records. 14. He got this, they'll open it up. 15. Gonna play one more shot to get absolutely perfect. What impressed me at the Crucible was that Judd Trump won the afternoon session very handsomely on the last day, but you'd have thought in the evening it was a different match. There was no sign of any 23. pressure from O'Sullivan's side. He came out, he still had a good lead actually, 14 11, but just it was like they were starting again, and he was just so professional the way he closed it out. This is table two, meanwhile, and uh, things coming to an end there. Jamie Jones and Sam Craig. Of course, Jones has already won that group. He's going to be unbeaten, but it looks like a draw. 29. Unless there's a late twist. It looks like 2-2. Two, two. you were saying before about Ronnie coming out in that last six. session of all the things he can do that's amazing the most impressive thing is the fact that he can go out there and play 37 you know like he's in his living room or just down the club when he's obviously you know he's not he doesn't feel like that the nerves are there um, you can't hide from that and to just play to the level he does but the control is just incredible absolutely because it, you could argue that was the biggest session of snooker he'd ever played. It was to equal the Hendry record. Had he lost, it would be talked 44. about 30 years from now, the fact that he'd sort of collapsed in the final, but there was none of that. <laughs> it was just, OK, I need four frames, 45. I'm going to win them. Yeah, I mean, he has lost Lees before in final, you know, like Mark caught him up, didn't he? So he'll know that, and as much as he doesn't look like it at times, he is a human being, and he will be feeling emotions. He just obviously deals with it a lot better than most. Well, he made uh, an uncertain start to this frame, but now 47. he's looking good to win the opener. Of course, he, that would mean he would only need one more frame in this match to 48. win the group. Fifty-three. Well, he still needs the red. He's 47 in front, 51 on. 56. It's not an absolute gimme this. He can be missed. There, he's missed it. 
Ronnie O'Sullivan, 56. So a swift 56, but as I say, the frame not over yet. Just to clear up the other group on table two, Jamie Jones has finished top, David Lilly second, Sam Craigie third, Andres Petrov fourth. One. I've got to say, I didn't see that one. Well, seems cruel, but it's a cruel game. Frame ball, remember? Seven. But Eight. Ursa Backer had a few chances at the start of the frame, which he didn't take. Yes, it's the 30th anniversary, of course, for the class of 14. 92 on turning professional, O'Sullivan. John 15. Higgins and Mark Williams, they were the star pupils, there's various others as well, but of course those three are the ones that we always talk about, and they start the season all in the top eight in the world, O'Sullivan is number one. Yeah, it's uh, phenomenal, but they're still the best. All three were in the semis 24. at the Crucible. So, a little bit of luck in the end, but O'Sullivan looking good here. He only needs one more frame Ronnie O'Sullivan, to win the group. He's made uh, a good start, a swift 56, and he's won the frame to lead 1-0. He lost it. And you can't say that's the killer blow. Well, you can say it was a hammer blow. Two devastating breaks. He's on the brink. One on one throw, Sullivan. He's got a frame on the board. He looked mighty good in doing it. What a way to open your account for the season. I get the feeling it will not be his last trophy this campaign. Welcome back to Leicester. So the maths is simple now. This man, Ronnie O'Sullivan, needs one more frame and he has won the group. 1-0 up on Alexander Ersenbacker at the end of uh, this uh, Group 1 here at the Bet Victor Championship League. Just while we wait for the next frame to talk about tomorrow because we've got some uh, interesting names coming in. Ricky Walden is the top seed on Table 1. He's with Jackson Page, of course, the young Welshman who got to the second round of the World Championship. Gerard Green and Andy Lee. In table 2... Xiao Gudong of China, Rod Lawler, who, of course, he's come back on through the Q School. Not many players love Snook as much as him. Game. Scott Alexander Donaldson, who's a former winner of the Invitation Championship League. And uh, Nutcherat Wong Harathai, also known as Mink. She's the Women's World Champion. Of 
course, Sir Mink and O'Sullivan will be involved in the new World Mixed Doubles event. That's for four pairings, the top four male players, the top four female players in uh, September. So that's uh, a new innovation. But I think you won a version of that, Michael, a few years ago. I didn't like to bring it up, but... I mean, I'm glad you did. Uh, yeah, we, me and uh, Rianne won the mixed pairs. You know, she's been very lucky drawing me, obviously, being my partner. Yes, the 12 times women's world champion, Rian Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I said to her on Twitter, do I need to get my queue out? Pra practicing for the, uh, I didn't realise it was random draw. I assume that she'll be avoiding, uh, sort of refusing a spot. You know, because she's my partner. Yeah, what? we'll see about that. Meantime... Good pop from Merson Backer. Well, he will be aware of the maths, of course. He knows now he's got to win 3-1. So that will uh, clear the mind somewhat. Yes. I don't know. He could. He's got a couple of options here. Probably just try and move the red away to get on the, the red next to it. And now he has to think about how he's going to go into them reds. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. I don't know whether the pink goes. Probably go for the blue. Get high on the blue. Seventeen. Not perfect, I don't think, but he's still got enough angle. I think he's got a screw screw shot. This is. There we go. He just landed a bit, not 24. just a bit straight. So the screw took quick look, and he didn't hit the black, uh, pink in the full in the face. So he's he's gone down the table. Now it's unraveling a little bit. Just so important, you know, to get that close control. If it had got high enough, that would have been a lot easier shot to move the reds. Alexander Schumbacher, 23. I don't know whether there's a double on here. Stay down the table for the pink. He's got a point in the middle here. Got a feeling he might go for it. No. Nope. Well, time's running out, so this is an important visit for Urson Backer now. He's already 23 in front. Got to try and put something together here. One. Didn't play that well, but he's on a nice kiss, so crisis averted. Yeah, he's, you feel like he's got to take advantage of this this opportunity. He's going to stand any chance. Two. 
I mean, it looks a bit of a mountain, but it's amazing how quick frames can trickle by. So, got to keep fighting and try and keep focused. Thank you. Seven. Eleven. Twelve. He'll want to try and pop the pink at some point. Move out of the way. Seventeen. Thank you. Eighteen. Worked out really well. Twenty five. Could skid off on there, develop a few. Okay. Twenty six. Feels like he's done the hard work now, just got to put this frame away. He's not hung around either, has he? Got this sort of uh, manner about him, he looks very confident. But it's just keeping control as well and not sort of making unforced 33. errors. There's my OCD, but I'm dying for him to pot the pink. <laughs> that, but he's had a couple of chances to go for it, and I'm, I definitely would have played it myself. 34. Well, what we can say is if he pots this red, O'Sullivan needs snookers, and then this whole. Uh, deciding match becomes very interesting certainly if he wins the next frame it does because then it all goes to the last frame here you go Michael I feel, I'm starting to feel more relaxed he don't want to play it does he <laughs> Forty-eight. Uh, it's nicely done. That removes 49. any doubt about the frame. Yeah. So if he can win the next, then the whole group comes down to the last frame. Fifty-six. To enjoy playing Ronnie O'Sullivan, not everyone 57. would say that. But remember, they played twice before. He's won the two of them, Merson Backer. Sixty-four. Yeah, his ball strike 65. is similar to his attitude. He's quite assertive. Do you know what I mean? quite punchy. I think that the way he walks on tables like that as well, and I think. That helps him when he plays like Ronnie, he's not intimidated. That's a really good shot he's played there. 72. Seventy-three. He made a century against Farrakh Ajayib in the opening frame there, 102. Seventy-eight. Eighty. Eighty-one. 
93. Well, the last match, let's be honest, wasn't up to much, but this is already good stuff. And, of course, a very meaningful 87. match to decide the group winner. And Ursan Bakker has hit back strongly here, having lost the first frame. 92. I've always felt when, I'm, when you play running, it's like, you've, in a way, you've, you've got to play well. But you know that, so you just sort of takes all the doubt out. Just, you've got to play. Sometimes I can help you. Well, brilliant break that was from Alexander Ursenbacker. Wonderful Alexander clearance in the end of 105. He looks so confident. He levels up at one each. So one each and a terrific clearance. It wasn't just winning the frame, it's how he won it. Alexander Urson back of swift break it was, 105. So Thank you, third O'Sullivan frame. still Ron needs Ursa another frame. But if Urson Backer wins this one, it all goes to the last frame. So uh, a tense old finish here and a high quality match already. Yeah, hopefully that, that break settled Alex down. So if he does get chances, he can take the first ones he gets. Just while this frame gets going, we have had a competition today to win two tickets to the Champion of Champions to Ronnie O'Sullivan's group. That will be in Bolton at the end of October, early November. And uh, we have a winner. Phil Yates asked the question earlier, how many frames did Ronnie O'Sullivan lose at the Crucible in winning his seventh world title? The answer was 38. And the winner is Craig Brooks from Crew. So well done, Craig. And uh, Matchroom will be in touch with you in due course. We'll have more competition questions as the tournament goes on. Tickets on sale this week for the Champion of Champions. It's a great event, that. to listen out for more questions. I think you played a bit, didn't you, Michael, one year? Did you play Ronnie in, in that? The champion of champions? I did, yeah. Started off with a, an amazing 100 break and then I didn't get a shot for the next four frames. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is sort of tournament, one table, high prestige. Yeah, fantastic event to be in.
reds are starting to move out in the open, so we're going to just get in. We've got a few there to get going. I don't know whether they can play this to the black here or just try and go back into bulk. Missed it by a mile. That could be a nice flick for that red. Oh, and that's perfect now. Now that didn't look good at all, and then all of a sudden that little flick there, he can put the white where he wants. So obviously pink and black in a bit of a mess, so high on the blue, as quickly as he can get get into them reds. Because he not, not only move the reds, he'll move the, the pink and black as well, so... That's what we'll be thinking about doing. Sort of pack you need to go in with a bit of pace, really. Well, even though he's even though got a few reds out, if he does Six. get the perfect angle, you'll probably see him go into him straight away. Sam. <coughs> it's not perfect again, although he can. Depends how he sees it. Yeah, he's played that really well. Twelve. Is it that fantastic? Yeah, the point is he doesn't play any differently against O'Sullivan than he would anyone else. He plays his natural attacking game. He's not intimidated into playing anything else. You've got to do that with Ronnie because if he senses, if he senses, if he smells a bit of fear, you know, he'll just roll over you. So they're all open. There's still a bit of work to do. I'd love to get on that red near the black, or if the black goes, get on it. That's what he's played there, look, but danger if you go a bit far. Yeah, that was a risky shot. If it 18. had worked out, it would have been great, but now he's got a tough red. It's how he's going to get on the next colour, really. Didn't have a very big area to land on there. Nineteen. Don't really want to get there, but he's still got a bit of a tester. But he's landed about as good as you can on that that blue. He could play on that ready played on now. Screw back, but I don't know whether we will. I think it's probably worth just playing with, playing with the blue at the minute. Oh, and he's missed that. I'd be disappointed with that. It's a shot he'd get a lot of my percentage of. Yeah, big shot in the whole group, this, I think. He was starting to look really good, really confident. But he's missed that. And did the initiative back to the world champion. One. I think Ronnie could play that red near the black, but he's going to cannon the black near the near the pocket. He's a bit hampered, but he does get it. He'll open it right up. There you go. Seven. So one more decent shot. And he's going to be perfect. Fourteen. Fifteen. Been a lovely shot there, quite delicate. Now he's going to probably try for an angle. Twenty-three. 
This is where he's just so good. He's always getting that right now, the right 30. angle, just so it's just an easy shot, just dropping it in. 31. It's always the right side. Oh, that shot there is <laughs> such a good shot that was. 38. 39. Well, has that missed blue cost us and back here a chance to win this group? Because if he loses this frame now, of course, 46. Whatever happens in the last frame, Mo Sullivan is coming back for winners' week. A reprieve. Well, yes, the van. 46. A loud sigh there, wasn't there? He missed that. The one good part, he's got a great chance. Probably only leave this red. It's the only red he can leave, so there's not that much pressure on it. Missed it. Yes, you always leave it. <laughs> Good now for Alex. Well, a little short here. Six. No problem. Seven. He was the big favourite, of course, at the start of the day. This looked like the match, though, that if he was going to come unstuck, it would be this one, bearing in mind the previous meetings with them, between them, that, I should say. 12. And, uh, well, there's some backer. Did have that chance, missed the blue. 13. And now he needs something to go badly wrong in the next 20 seconds or so, because O'Sullivan, well, he's 40 in front. He took the... Well, in fact, yeah, snooker's required. If he pots another red, that is. See, I was getting confused there. <laughs> but he's on the red. Or is he? Well, just kept 16. running, didn't it, that cue ball? He's 43 in front with 43 on. And in it goes. Yeah, the blue was a key moment, and it looks like 17. O'Sullivan, regardless of what happens in the last frame, He's going to be our group winner. Thirty-one. So Sullivan, of course, who uh, so impressively won a seventh world title at the end of last season, is going to be unbeaten today. Thirty-three. As the new campaign begins. Thirty-six. And as I said earlier, he didn't have to come here, did he? You know, he's in a sort of position, a bit like Neil Robertson and John Higgins, who haven't entered. He could have. Sat this one out, but Ronnie O'Sullivan loves playing snooker. That's one thing that has not changed over the years. He loves the game. He doesn't always love the sport. The two are different things. But he loves playing, and well, 45. he'll get the chance to play here again in Leicester in a few weeks' time. I think he said before he likes this event. It's quite relaxed for him, as you get a few matches in a day.
So Ronnie O'Sullivan is confirmed as the group winner. We've got one more frame to see if he can end the day with three wins out of three, but he only needed a draw, Thank and that, of course, friend. is the best Alexander's person back we can hope for now. Break. Sullivan's legacy in the game, of course, is assured. They'll be speaking about him 100 years from now. The question is just now how he can add to it, I guess. He's on top of all the the lists that matter in terms of ranking titles and so on. 39 to his name, but uh, you fancy there's going to be plenty more in the next few years. There's no sign of obvious decline. Quite the opposite, actually. Seems to have just got himself really together in the last sort of decade. Yeah, I think he's definitely be best he's ever been, really, um, generally. I think, like we said before, I think he just looks like he's enjoying it more than ever, which is massive for him. Yeah, I mean, you, people say he picks and chooses his events. Well, he pretty much plays in everything, actually, if you look at it. Didn't play in the shootout last year, Didn't not a fan of that, maybe, but most of the other events he did enter. And he's found a sort of quite a good way of sort of being at Thomas. He doesn't just make it about the snooker. He'll find out beforehand where the best running routes are. Is there a gym in the hotel? All that sort of thing, what the best restaurants are. So the snooker becomes obviously the most important thing, but not the only thing that he looks forward to when he goes on the road. Yeah, he's talked about it's like a holiday for him, isn't it? Um, but that's... That's the thing. That's sort of the way he goes about it to sort of take the pressure off him because you know he's always the focus on all the tournaments he's in. So I think he tries to not get wrapped up in that and just yeah treat it like a weekend away and it seems to work. Yeah, and he's not one to sort of sit all day in the players' room. He likes to be out spending his own time doing his own things. Yeah, definitely, and uh, it works for him. They'll miss you in that players' room, Michael, this year. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a really strange season for everyone, really. Hopefully we'll be back soon. said that Ronnie don't like the shootout I quite like it yeah I know you do <laughs> former winner one to shoehorn that into it uh... I well remember after you won it because we went straight to Southport and breakfast you were like you thought it'd be royalty people John Higgins coming over all these great the great and the good of the game coming over to your table to congratulate you yeah it was nice it was I got Seven. quite a lot of messages and um, yeah it was nice Well, that's annoyed him, hasn't it? Rodney O'Sullivan, seven. Yeah, just careless, one. It really is. He's on the. I think he's in the car home emotionally. Work he's done for today. I've done that one. He's looking at the black, pot the black, going to the reds. Stay on the other red. I think he's looking at it. This is the only thing, I guess, with group formats. You, you can get a dead frame. So whatever happens in this frame, apart from the fact that obviously you go Sullivan would have won three out of three if he wins it, it doesn't affect anything. So you feel he might as well try something here. Not his favourite ball. That really Alexander's was what cost him in the last frame, the blue. Yeah, I think back to that when he played on the red near the black. I thought that was a tough shot because he was perfect before that. and Then he sort of unravelled. 
He'll be a bit disappointed because he has had a few, he has had some chances. I think as well, though, because this is a dead frame that, that sort of, you, you know, this, the intensity's gone. Yeah, that, that little bit of pressure, it, it does focus your mind. Now that pressure's released, it's, you know, Ronnie knows he's, he's done his work and then Alexander's sort of, his heart's broke a little bit. Foul, NMS, for Alexander Osimbaka. Yeah, you might see him go for this. It looked good, it turned out a little bit that. Yeah, I agree. Out there, it was looking good, wasn't it? We're still it's stayed over the pocket. One. Well, what has he got for us in the last frame of the day? Eight. I always feel when I when I watch him that and it sounds really sort of obvious but he's just playing the game he's not thinking about his 16. technique he's drilled that in practice he knows how it feels and he's practiced 17. and worked hard at it but then when he gets out there he just plays the game he thinks where he wants the white, where he wants to pot it, and just manoeuvres it where he wants it. And it's it sounds really simple, but it's so hard at times. You know, a lot of professionals struggle with that. But he can 24. just master that. Just go out there and play like he can in practice. It'd be great to see Ronnie O'Sullivan century, wouldn't it, in the last frame of the day? 31. To add to his tally of 1,169 for his career. It's not bad effort, is it, that? Well, when he made the thousandth at the Guildhall Preston in the Players' Championship final, that was an extraordinary occasion. Made it in the winning frame of the final crowd on, the, on their feet never seen anything like it yeah I think Neil was more happy than Ronnie was to be there but also what happened was I think Ronnie went in off at the end and Rob, Neil Robertson still got the high break because of it so, yeah. he, so he was happy that, well that, that shows you really how lucky that man is 45 that could only happen to Neil that 46 well, every chance to see a century to close proceedings and then hopefully we'll get a word with him. Fifty three. Yeah, that first season in ninety two he, he won seventy four of his first seventy six matches. Played a lot of matches that season. He only actually made twenty nine centuries. So he was still obviously very talented, but still a little raw. Last season he played 61 matches, he made 62 centuries, so 60. at this vintage, O'Sullivan just has such great control 61. in his game. And as I say, there's no sign of decline. You do wonder <laughs> how long he's going to continue at the top. It could be several years yet. He's already the youngest ranking event winner at 17. The oldest is Ray Reardon at 50. Well, O'Sullivan 67. is 47 this year, so 
That could be the next target. I definitely think he can beat that 68. without a doubt. It's, it's all about whether he wants it. If his eyes are working, um, then yeah, it's all about whether he wants it. And he does love it. And he works super hard at his game. You know, I know he's got a really casual way about him, but you know, don't don't fall into the trap of thinking 75. he's not worked hard. I mean, he's changed his game through the years. 76. His action and that, and you don't do that without trying. You know, working hard at it. Brilliant. <coughs> 83. <coughs> 84. So he needed a draw. He's got the win. It's three out of three today. A successful start to the new season for Ronnie O'Sullivan, who ended last season so spectacularly. 89. Ninety. Ninety-four. Ninety-six. Well, it doesn't matter the 99. venue, the tournament, the match. There's something special about Ronnie O'Sullivan Century. And there's another one for the list. 103. 103. Fine finish 108. from the world champion, who will be coming back for winner's week at the end of July. 114. 114. It's a clearance of 121, 121 from Ronnie O'Sullivan, who completes victory Sullivan. over Alexander Ursenbacher by three frames to one. <coughs> yeah, it's three wins out of three, maximum of nine points for O'Sullivan, and as I say, he progresses to winner's week in a few weeks' time. Ursenbacher knew he needed to win, but uh, really it was the last frame where it all started to go wrong from him, and uh, when O'Sullivan